Ashanti and Lloyd Polite. Now, how many of you know that Ashanti's at the height of her career? Y'all remember Ashanti, y'all know her, she's so bad. This brother was responsible for Ashanti's career. He is a serial entrepreneur, starting ventures in sports management, insurance, technology, and more. And he is currently the CEO and president of Ad Ventures Music. Let's bring out Chris Gotti Lorenzo. Now, th these brothers, I'm the lone lady up here today, and these brothers are going to be talking about some really, really passionate and important things. And it's really important that all of you who are in this room get this knowledge because these are very, very powerful people who've done some great work. So again, let's thank Scott for bringing us all together and let's jump right into the conversation. Please have a seat. So we're here to talk about hip hop and how hip hop has been influ influential and continue to be influential. I can't sit down here and not be able to see these folks from the other side, guys, so I'm gonna stand up. Um, so we wanna really touch on what we need to do to make sure that hip hop continues to have that edge and that it continues to be connected to our communities. I didn't see my brother Roland Martin out here, but Roland, you know we love you. So John, and Daytuan, I want to go to the two of you first, and I'm going to jump right into something that's really important. What I think is happening is that in the music industry, um, you know, the purse strings are being held by corporations, and a lot of times sponsors and others have a lot to say about the content and also what our artists are able to do and what the networks are able to do. How do you guys navigate that? Because I think for many of us, we as activists, we come to you and we're like, okay, we want to boycott. Like, hold on, <laughs> we can't necessarily do that, and we have to be strategic. I think they want me to go to this mic, guys. Okay, there we go. Um, you know, they want us to be more. You guys want us to be more strategic about how we're going to approach. Um, boycotting corporations or raising issues around police brutality and just social justice causes in general. So why don't you talk to us a little bit about the process that you go through in trying to balance the, 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 the difference between an artist being able to speak out the community issues um, and, and how it impacts your bottom line. Well, just being uh, a content bucket that, that's on every day, all day. It's a 24-hour news cycle. Um, when different instances, even if, if I'm able to bring it up, the instance that, is, that you had with uh, American Airlines, right. when, when we have things like that, we have to report on it. And we have to be able to say, this is what's going on in our community. Because if we don't do it, there are a whole lot of things that happen within uh, everyday life that doesn't get any kind of light. Right. If someone of your stature is being affected, we have to say something because you're on the front lines for us. Mm -hmm. So if we, if we don't get that word out, then we would be at fault as well. And, I, and that just doesn't sit right with me. Mm -hmm. just, just coming from the kind of family that I'm from um, in Brooklyn, New York. Um, but thank you. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, we do want to be able to have open discourse with these kind of companies, so that way when instances like that happen, we can have uh, an open dialogue for them to know like, hey, you're going to lose this whole community if you do not address this. Right. And a lot of times it, it does get to a point where we're able to speak, but sometimes they do push back a little bit and they're like, okay, let's see what happens. Mm. And then things just kind of just sit and languish. I think on my, si on my side personally, that's when I go to like the sales department and people that deal with them on a monetary basis and we try to work things out and say, hey, can you bring certain people to the table so we can have a different kind of conversation? Because sometimes when the pressure is on them in, in the public eye, their main thing is to go and hide and wait it out. Mm. And we don't want them to wait it out. Mm. You know what I mean? And artists, what, what, what's end up happening is that a lot of artists, they'll address the issue and then we can, we can attack it from that angle as well. You wanna jump? Well, Go ahead, you talk first and then I'm gonna ask a follow-up question. Go ahead. No problem. From a network perspective, you know, in this media space, we utilize our digital platforms really to 
address all social concerns. But from a linear perspective, we always look to partner with organizations like we did with the NAACP a couple of years ago with the Get Out the Vote campaign. Whether it's the NAACP or any other organization, we kind of use our linear space as that platform to provide a bigger voice. And that's what it's about for us to connect with not only the NAACP, but any organization, any artist who wants to have a bigger platform for what they're doing. We want to be that partner. Do you feel like there are consequences to being a network, a brand that is supporting social justice causes? Do you feel those consequences and, and, and are they significant? I think, again, when you're providing a platform and not the perspective, there shouldn't be. Hmm. Um, and that's what we're looking to do, provide a platform for the voice. We're not telling people necessarily who to vote for, we're telling you why it's important to vote. Hmm. And that's what it is. If we can provide a wide range of platforms for people, whether it's you know, on the linear space, social media space, you know, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, whatever medium, I think that's our purpose and our role to provide that voice. Let's say with this thread to um, Chris, when we come to you and talk about for the last 20 years, you've been dealing with artists and often artists want to jump in on different issues. We don't necessarily have all of the infrastructure necessary to keep it going, but they want to get in. How have you dealt with trying to help artists have a voice, but then also be uh, protective of all that they've worked so hard to be able to accomplish? Um, so to help them have a voice, we have to always allow them to speak and have the freedom of that um, opinions. And you know, change is imminent. We have to always take in consideration the change that's going on in the world that we're living in, even here at the NCAA. I mean, I said NCAA, excuse me. The NACP, that you have to grow with that ch change. You have to, t the times have been different. And what I do is I allow them the platforms that I've created through social media networks and things to get their voice out so it could be seen and heard um, and actually allow them that freedom. Hmm. Do, do you feel like just, have just to follow up what Chris is saying, I, I think from an artist, artist perspective or just any individual perspective, the, the key is information. Mm. information. What is the fight about? What are we talking about? Um, right. You have to be informed before you move forward with any action. And I think that's sometimes where we kind of lack. We, Okay, that's important because I think what we're hearing is that we're not necessarily looking for artists or networks to take positions, not all the time, sometimes they do, but to make sure that they're giving the information. So perhaps for those of us who are activists, rather than us trying to push and force people to take a position, what we want to do is ask them to partner and share info about a particular concern. In some cases, because there's nothing wrong with an artist or athlete having a position. Mm -hmm. And I exactly. commend LeBron and other athletes who do have a position right. on issues. Name. And let me say this, Tamika. I was speaking to Curtis um, Rowe in the back, big Curtis Blow, mm -hmm. because I was a big fan of his. And he sang about the social consciousness because he had an education. The school systems were better because Hazel Dukes in New York fought to make sure they were good school systems. Right. And then later we saw the public enemy who fought and taught about social consciousness and uh, uh, Nas and others. But then when the education system began to fail, mm. when drugs and guns were dumped in our communities in the 80s, then you had also uh, 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 the criminal justice system, uh, which had always been against black men, became even more prevalent in Los Angeles. So the conversation shifted mm -hmm. from social consciousness because of the lack of information in the failed school system and the, and, and the things that were going on uh, in our community, the dumping of drugs and guns. So it shifted over to gangster rap and they began to sing about their reality. NWA sang, sang about primarily police brutality mm -hmm. because Los Angeles was the highest uh, uh, area population right. uh, who were being brutalized. And then others in New York began to sing about the drug game. 
Jay-Z and the others because New York was the center of the drug game until, of course, the mid-80s when the Colombians started dumping it in L.A., which spread around the country, and the CIA facilitated, of course. But my <laughs> point is, it is the, Tell the truth. reduction in the education and in the, uh, 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 the realities of our community that caused the shift from social consciousness to gangster rap. So let me follow up on that with you because you are the one person who is not directly associated with hip hop, um, but yet we've heard you n a number of times and look at this history that you're able to give us so quickly and brilliantly. Do you feel that artists have that responsibility? Do you think that that is something that we as a community need to be challenging our artists, that if you want our money, you also need to be a champion for the causes that we care about? Absolutely, too much um, to those who are given much, much given, is required. must give back. Yes, right. Yeah, I'll just use that. Um, when you're blessed, you gotta give to the rest. And you have a higher responsibility because of that national figure, you know, there's many who would like and do live a destructive lifestyle but you have to discipline yourself because you are a leader mm -hmm. and in fact black youth lead the world mm -hmm. in culture and entertainment yes. and otherwise they listen our millennials and young adults and many adults listen to them before they'll listen to us or the ones who are more educated, what I'm referring to us. Right. Why? Because they relate to them. They relate to their reality. So they're more effective in a real way than we are. And so, yes, they have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. Not that they should, they must they meet must. their responsibility. I agree. That's Chris, something, you wanted, again, that is yep. that, absolutely right. Absolutely. That is something that has to be taken, uh, be aware of because the youth needs the elders with the knowledge, the information to help guide them, but you have to be able to relate to them. You know, I was just talking to uh, Nelson Mandela's uh, daughter, she's the Duchess in South Africa, and at another summit out in uh, Chicago, and she mentioned how all of the, her um, tribe that's over there, her, the village, they all wanted to be into lawyers and things like that, doctors, and now the kids all want to be into rap. Right. And she right. said she wants to block it. And I said, you cannot do that. And, she, and I told her, if you did that, it's only going to make their want stronger for that, that you're blocking. You should em embrace it, learn about it, and deal with it with them together. Mm -hmm. And that'll help actually grow what you want to do. And that's what I was telling you with the NAACP. We have to do that here as well. I was explaining that to Scott. To get this to go to the next century, to keep everything moving, you have to embrace the youth. Yeah. Um, and they do run this, they, they're the ones that are actually the future when you hear that saying, uh, the children are our future, it's, it, it is exactly right. Well, but shout real, out real to- quick, Real to quick, see, and, and on top of that, when you say that you have to incorporate the youth, it's the, it's the ones that are actually uh, looked at by a lot of the younger guys is like, okay, he's real, he went through this, similar to like what Meek Mill is going through right now. Exactly. He, and, and he's able to make a song called Stay Woke, but then you also have artists like my son who's able to come out with Gangster, but Woke AF. Mm -hmm. And these are people that have gone through the criminal justice system and they're able to show these guys, like I'm not just talking about it from a safe place, I'm talking about from being within the belly of the beast and I'm able to communicate with them. So you need leaders that are in, in those positions that are also talented artists to be able to say like, yo, it's cool to talk like this. Mm. It's cool to exactly. make this your first single, not your filler track. Well, you know but, what but I mean? Let me, let me, let me ch jump in on that because one of the things that I've seen happen is that you have brothers like you who want to see these artists go out, speak up if you want to, we'll protect you, we'll work with you. And then you have the PR people that get involved and the teams that get involved and start trying to change their words. I mean, it actually happened to me as, in, uh, as a, a leader within the Women's March. We had different people working with us on PR and they started to try to change my speeches mm -hmm. after I've been speaking for 20 plus years. And they started saying, you know, these words are not good because you'll get yourself in trouble. And I feel like artists really jump up and they're ready to go. But then these teams that have been uh, put around them will definitely block them from being able to, to really advocate in the ways in which they should. Where are you? It's all Jonathan, pro okay. it's profit motivated and yeah. they'll change the narrative of what you're trying to do. You have to be strong in your resolve. Um, that's 
for anyone if you whatever you're trying to accomplish you cannot waver in your approach and how you do it as, as long as you're pure in your intentions right. you'll be fine but that's what happens with the team around them because they want to make a profit from what's going on and they'll use that against or to change to what they want instead of just doing the right thing and it's sad you can't you can't how do you fix that 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 really leads to just the artist being able to talk to the the person around them and make a decision on I'm not doing that or in in changing what the their their advisory board might be telling them to do right. and that that takes a decision education again we're all not educated uh, but we do have our, our opinions we all have an opinion and that's one of the things when you talk about artists and giving back they just don't understand most of these guys they don't understand what they're doing they're just going along as it goes and that you got to kind of give them their learning curve kind of if you understand that to l allow them to go through what they need to to really understand why they should be here why they should be supporting things but everyone learns things at their own rate mm -hmm. and, and and that's what's going on with it's the, interesting that you mentioned uh my son who i i work with very closely yes. most people see us traveling together all the time at these conferences and I feel like my son's own career has been impacted by this because he is someone who wants to speak truth to power in his music. We know he has dope music. His freestyle was amazing. My son, stand up so people can see who you are. Here's my son. Here you go. Yeah. Um, that's another one of Hazel Duke's children. Um, and, and, but I know I watch people try to ignore him because of the fact that he is such a strong advocate it's for too social powerful justice. to but, ignore. However, Harry Belafonte told me one time that once he saw what was happening to Paul Robinson, and he, you know, that was, he, he was his idol. So he was watching the blackballing that began to happen. And so he, as Harry Belafonte, started to do small venues, going into the community, very, very similar to what I see my son doing, touching his own people. So regardless of whether the mainstream media focused on anything that he does, he knows that Harry B can turn out audiences everywhere across the world because he's actually doing the work on behalf of his people. And I think there is something in that in terms of what we should be encouraging our artists to do. Well, one thing I will say, and, and just to kind of, you know, to your point, is everyone's watching now. Social media. You know, social media is the gift and the yeah. curse. Um, and it's not only what happens in your neighborhood, you're able to see what's happening in Atlanta, New York, Chicago. And what's happening is, you know, there's interesting times now in the political landscape and how that mixes with music. People are just fed up. So when you have someone like a Meek Mill, it's not like he's just coming out and saying, this is what I'm going to talk about, you know, in the social justice space. His perspective is, this is what happened to me. Mm. And this is what's happening to other people I was locked up with. And there are people who are locked up and out of jail who are saying, you know what, that's the same thing that happened to me. Right. And when you get enough people in a room that's when the action starts. Mm. It's not just an artist saying, hey, just I want to speak up for this. It's like, no, these are personal experiences right, right. that we want to step up and discuss. So let's talk about black women for a moment because you know I can't have this panel discussion and not bring black women into the dialogue. There is a young woman who is here with us today. Um, she's been, she's gonna be speaking a little later this afternoon. Her name is Shakishia Clemens. Um, she was the young woman attacked by police in a Waffle House. How many of you saw the video of the woman in the Waffle House who was abused? So she's actually with us. Shakishia, you can wave your hand. Um, and what I noticed with that is that there were some artists who tried to put out information. You know, we had some people like Phaedra and Yandy and others who are in the industry to support her. But with black women, there is most certainly um, this, this, we get ignored. Like we're being abused by police. We, state sanctioned violence is an issue that concerns us as well. Yet and still, when these things happen to us, it's as if the media doesn't know, right? You know, it's as if black women don't exist. Yet and still, we're the ones driving everything. So 94% of black women voted for Hillary Clinton, whether we liked her or not in the election. The same thing in Alabama with Doug Jones and and um, um, I can't, Roy, Roy Moore, I shouldn't even be saying his name, but that gentleman, um, we voted 
at a very high percentage, and so did black men, for Doug Jones, whether we like these people or not, because we're voting on behalf of society. And I want, I want you all to speak to- You're actually what putting a lot of black women in office as well. And, and, and exactly, I mean, how many elections, a lot of people don't hear about these local elections across the country where black women are being uh, elected to office. AC Abrams, Abrams, the governor, the governor of Georgia. That's right, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Oh. So speaking of that, Stacey Abrams and things like that, how are you all using your platform to increase the voices and to really help show the issues that black women are dealing with? I mean, those who watch my show know that first I entertain and also try and uh, uh, put some uh, wisdom and some social justice as part of the cases I handle. But first you gotta entertain folks. They if you're watching television, open that mind and that door and walk through it. So that platform, they can be used either in the directly or in their social media. And what you're saying is you're advocating on behalf of black men, um, women. I believe it is my opinion that black men are demonized and black women are ignored. And as a result, we need to point that out. Unfortunately, in the hip hop community, um, particularly in the last 30 years, misogyny has existed. And so we don't have brothers on the front line because they have been programmed or programmed themselves with misogyny, uh, 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 a disrespect for black women. And so it's hard to get them involved. The most powerful segment in our community of America today is the hip hop community. Don't be confused about right. it. Right. And so as a, in terms of getting out to vote and getting masses to turn out uh, or who are listening and watching. So until, once again, the hip hop community, they must stop the misogyny, then we'll respect black women and fight for black women. Wow. Uh, Go ahead, Chris. Well, uh, I'm from a big family. That's first, there's eight of us. I have five sisters. Oh, uh, so, so my you mother have to empower women, whether you like it or not. So if anyone knows about Murder Inc, we, we built my company. That me and my brother, we hired ha more than half of our staff was all females. Wow. It was all women, because we wanted to empower them. And then to this day, my companies all are more. I'm more populated with women than men, uh, black women at that, or minorities, even Latin women. Uh, also, it's all about empowerment to give them their voice. And then when you talk about those are the rappers. So I'm a company, I never uh, looked at it from that position, right, from a rapper's position. I'm the owner of that music and, and the content. If we exploited certain things, I have to defend, I have to defend, so when you speak, I have to defend certain things. Not saying I condone it, but you have to understand also there's a whole picture there. But I always gave back for that, uh, from all of those things that we might have been part of in a way, again, all of, our, all of our biggest records was about women. If you listen to Murder, Inc., it was all women records. So we supported all the women. Mm. Our biggest audience was women. We knew that, and that's why we always gave back, and that's why I hired the women today. I just believe women work more, <laughs> and they care about what they do more. So it's, no, it's, it's absolutely the best thing for us to do is support the women. So when you see these things go around, I'm a defender for all women. So that's, for me, it's a natural thing just wow. for my family. That that's right. Well, not the biggest. Ja was bigger than Ashanti, but ja Ashanti was big, too. Yeah, I was going to say, that's big of you to say. We contributed to some of the We're hip-hop, so I can't get away from it. Back. You Thank can't you. get away from it uh, in hip-hop, right? We did contribute part of those things, but it's the picture. It's the culture, right? It's the culture of hip-hop, which is the largest culture in the world. I deal with kings, queens from all over, and they want hip-hop is in their country. Every corner of the world, you have hip-hop. So with that being in mind, we have to always have a little consciousness mm. of what's going on. You know, when we first started hip-hop, there was um, always the lyrics. It was always over the lyrics, and let's say I was very ignorant to that. Uh, as a youth when I was coming up with hip-hop and we didn't take it, uh, pay it no mind. And then you see the cause and effect now. Mm. So maybe the elders was telling us back then like what was going on and you didn't realize it. So now I have a daughter and now it's very conscious. Do I keep her away from it? No, but I do educate her in it mm. and make sure she understands who she is. It's about self-love and self-awareness and that's the main thing. All of this thing is entertainment in music. Don't get it confused, but it does have a Pied Piper effect, mm. right? We do take the kids, and that's the, 
you know, hip hop grows in both directions. It gets younger and older every day. There's no other business that you could think of in the world that does that. And that's why we're bigger than anything right now. Mm. Because we get younger and older every year. I'm 51. I am hip hop. I am the culture. That's who I am. I'm not going to change. Russell Simmons and so on. These guys are uh, uh, Curtis Blow. He is hip hop. He's getting older. He's going to have kids. So forth and so on. And that's so important to understand. And to protect the women is something that we have to understand. We can't convert everyone. That's just not a realistic goal. But we have to have certain things in place and agendas that will support and help. Like I said, my staff is will be the future bosses of all running these CEOs of all these companies and it will be women. And that's part of what I'm doing to give back for that whole, we're and how I approach this business. We're coming down to the end, but I want to get an answer from both of you on this issue of how we uplift and empower black women. And, and as you said, Latina women as well. Well, uh, at Vibe, what I made sure, and I don't even know if it was uh, consciously to, to be real with you, but, um, 80% of my staff is, is black women. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if y'all know what kind of edit meetings I have. <laughs> it's not gonna be a whole bunch of misogyny talking there. And um, what they do is they, they balance um, whatever kind of uh, music that comes out that might be derogatory towards women. The one thing that I know I can count on my staff to do, especially the women on my staff, is to give us a real raw, explanation of why this is wrong, uh, why this is important, and why they may dance or sing along to it. You know, like, it, it, sometimes that, that does happen. It's a good song, it's a catchy song, it might be talking down or whatever, they're like, yeah, that's not me. So it goes back to what Chris was saying about empowering your children and understanding who they are. And if they hear something like that and they and enjoy it, they know like, hey, that's not necessarily me, but that does not stop the effect. And I think what ends up happening is we get um, op-eds from our team that breaks down a lot of these different things. I'm talking yeah, about Shaniqua. Shaniqua Golden, Shaniqua who's Golden. one of my powerful. Most, most powerful young voices that's out here today. Um, you, would, you can find a, a piece from her speaking about the breakdown of R. Kelly and um, just different things like that. Like, do you love them at the barbecue or do you not? And, here, and here's how they feel. I think that's what's important, getting those issues out and having the discourse within our community as well as the people that, that, that actually make the music. And I also want to give those that do it, I want to give them the platform to say similar things that Chris has said. Like, yeah, I'm contributing to it, but this is why. At least want to hear the reason. And then sometimes you realize, like, yeah, they're just in it for the money, and, and you're wrong with that, and try to get something corrected with that. But um, definitely dealing with those issues and getting them out and having a platform for that is very important for us. Complexity is what, is what I'm hearing. Go ahead, John. I think from a network perspective, you know, BET has always been pretty diverse. Uh, but black women have, have been the driving force of the company. And it starts with Deborah Lee. Deborah Lee. Deborah Lee. And from yeah. Deborah goes to Janine Leibert, who's our CMO. And, and when you look at what we've done on a linear platform, you know, we've started the, the number one network for black women mm. with Centric. And that's continued in this transition to BET Her. And that's been the focus of giving a voice to every woman out there, whatever the platform, whether it's, it's business, it's science, it's medicine, to, to have a perspective and really promote that on the network. Mm. There's a whole linear channel. I hope you guys are watching BET Her, but there's a whole linear channel for yeah. that that salutes and Shout celebrates black women throughout the world. Yeah, and, and, and you know, I want to say personally that BET has certainly provided a platform for me a number of times. I just um, was honored by BET Her at the first annual event during the BET Awards weekend. Um, and BET Her Awards. BET Her Award at the BET Experience. <laughs> Last year, I got the Shine Your Light Award on the BET Awards show. So, you know, they really have provided. I mean, when you think of all the women there, Michelle Thornton and Janine Lubert, and of course, like you said, um, Deborah Lee being the driving force of that, it is such a powerful place that a lot of black women are in there turning and shaking it up. So, Absolutely. Deborah Lee also has a conference that she does annually, Leading Women Defined, Leading women which Define. salutes women in corporate America. And, and, that, along with other entities on the network, are broadcasted on BET.com. Yeah, absolutely. But le leading women defined is a little different. 
you gotta be you gotta be a heavy hitter to get invited there. I've been and I've seen. It's it's a little different. But listen, it's time for us to close this panel. Um, I think we've had some good dialogue. We could talk all day. Obviously, it's more of a living room conversation. But we know what's at stake, and we understand that the urgency of now is 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 to me more than ever. And I'm sure there have been moments in history that you know of, Judge Mathis and others, that have been just as urgent. But for this generation, this is our time to be able to push back against what we see. And we know that turning out in this midterm election is not like a joke. This is very, very serious. We have no choice but to ensure that with Congress up for grabs and just with all that we see happening and the fact that this Supreme Court situation is so detrimental, we have no choice but to do all we can to block every crazy thing that is coming out of this administration that, that will oppress and, and, and is oppressing our people. And so I think what we want to hear and whomever wants to talk about this as we go towards the midterm election, what are the plans? Do you are you getting your artists engaged? Do we need to figure out how to support you in that? You know, Judge Mathis, I know you're on TV, but outside of that, you are a walking brand, and I'm sure you're talking to people everywhere about what they need to be doing. Yep, we should give him a round of applause for that. We see him everywhere that's black. If it's black, he's there and on top of it. Um, and we want to thank you for that, Judge Mathis. And Vibe and also BET, I know there's work being done. Why don't you tell us what it is and we're going to close for the day. I'm not going to talk anymore after this. I love to run my mouth, but I think we want to hear from the experts. I want to thank you all so much for allowing me to come and be your moderator today. Thank you again to the entire NAACP team and also to Scott Esdale for his leadership. So let's go. Well, one, one thing I can say is, you know, two years ago when we were approached by the NAACP to create a get out the vote, a campaign, you know, we turned it around fairly quickly. We were at an NAACP dinner in New York and it was like, uh, you know, we want to do a promo. We want to do a PSA. And two weeks later, we were in LA shooting and then a week after that it was on air. Uh, hopefully we can be a little bit more strategic this time around, get in front of it and do the same thing we did bigger and better. Cool. Well, we know we got to follow up on that. We're, we're looking forward to the partnership. Item number one. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Um, with Vibe Magazine, what we've been doing is supporting a lot of the projects that come out in the entertainment world, such as the Khalif Browder story, um, having that family come through, giving them a platform to get their issues across, and supporting Hanif, uh, his brother, who's running for office out in New York. We're also looking... Uh, to just extend what we've been doing with Trayvon Martin's family, um, always giving them a, a platform as well. But then on a personal side, what we end up doing is uh, we have uh, different programs where I will go out and go speak to kids over at uh, Patches of Success. That's like different group homes that we go and we check out. Um, and also giving like new and upcoming directors and uh, videographers and documentarians, giving them that space to be able to tell these kind of stories. That way it can attract the kids because sometimes just us talking isn't doing it. Right. They need entertainment to be able to show what's going on in their communities and, and, and the like. So we're just here as a platform for the community. What I've always done, Mallory, is, is use my platform around the country to go to urban areas in particular and campaign for the officials uh, by way of uh, as a fundraiser for them, mm -hmm. uh, as a guest and host of their fundraisers, and particularly would get out the vote effort in the last uh, five days of an election because that's the biggest challenge in our community is getting out the vote. I was with Roz Barak and worked on his campaign in Newark. He had a significant challenge from the council president who had been funded by folks who don't love us as much as right. Ra Roz does. Right. So I went in and campaigned and he was successful because people knew his heart and they used their platforms to come in. I wasn't the only one that came in as a public figure. And so public figures must use it both to get out the vote because they admire, or at least your audience admires you, whatever that audience might be, and we must help our uh, candidates raise money because yes. money is the lifeblood yes, of right. politics. That's right. We can't talk about that enough. The fact that black folks are not donating in the ways in which we should um, to political campaigns, and we have to do that more often. So I'm going to speak for my company, Adventure Music, and the culture of hip-hop, because 
again, when you're talking about political positions and representing, there's been so much distrust from politicians, and that's very hard for these younger kids to understand why they should uh, support someone when they've seen corruption or something that's not honorable. And what I do with my, my platform with Adventure Music, what I do is while I tour, I've toured over 100 cities, and I, I make sure they understand the importance of figuring it out for their self. So inside of, I do seminars in every city I go into and in, with all these artists that come out to see. So I let them know you need to be involved in your political position from your city, you know, your local, local neighborhood, right, local. up to the president and the governors and, right, the, and right. the senators. And they have to understand why it's important because then I break down, thank you, I break down what's going on today mm -hmm. to explain to them but if you had someone else in there, this is what would happen. And I do that in all of my seminars while I'm educating them in the music industry. That's part of my agenda to teach them about that, especially, excuse me, especially once this man got into office today, like especially since then. If we didn't learn anything from any election, we certainly should have learned from this one. And I, I tell people, someone said, oh, Brittany Packnett. Um, from Campaign Zero said that it is nothing cool about not showing up. Like, you can't say you're in this and you're not showing up. And people telling you that you shouldn't vote is foolish. We ought not be telling our communities that. I know I said I wasn't going to talk, but we need to, to talk about this. It is not okay to tell our young people that they should not show up to vote on behalf of their lives. Yes. So thank you all so much. Thank you to the panel. Chris, no, excuse me, Chris. <laughs> Judge Mathis, Daytuan, and also John, these are brothers that you need to know and follow. They are the experts in the work, and they've been doing it outside the box for a long time. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for hosting. Thank, Thank you all. Thank you guys for here.